back to the RS6 and look who it is, Paul from Supercars and Bandit has joined. This is the first time the RS6 is actually featured in 2017. So, thanks for being part <laughs> so of much, that. So much for your daily. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of today is that we're doing a Q&A. Uh, a couple of days ago, during the week, I put out a Q&A on Instagram saying if you've got any questions that need answering, feel free to ask. Uh, and a special guest will be joining to be Quizmaster, which turned out to be Paul. Oh, did you say special? Special guest. Oh, thanks. Ex extra special. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it turns out that you guys have a lot of questions and we got 600, I think, in two, yep. in two days. 596. 596. Yeah, so thank you. Flattered and honoured, but Paul's got a really tough job now. <laughs> so um, yeah, the premise of this video is Paul's going to pick them out at random. He's had a flick through earlier. He's going to cherry pick them out. I think a few as he flicks through. Yeah, this is going to be a difficult edit, edit for you. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. <laughs> so fire away. Fire away. Okay. Yeah. So question number one from Wicker Ten. Wicker Ten. W e k e r r ten. Okay. Out of your cars, which one are you most excited to road trip? LT. Because you haven't done it. Because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt, the LT. Um, yeah, firstly because it hasn't left England yet. But secondly, the best experience I've had in an LT wasn't my own and it was abroad. <laughs> so, so I'm really looking forward to it. Trying to also, recreate. Yeah, but also at the minute it's running Winter Soto Zeros and I really want to put the trofeo r's back on it so when we go on our road trip which is happening i did see quite a few people asking that as well actually oh, if really? we're going on, on a road trip <laughs> yes we year. are absolutely and it's going to be big bigger yeah. than ever um so yeah so it's going to be an excuse to put the trofeo r's on the lt and get it into europe so that's it it's going to be the lt insane yeah. mr dk mr dot dk commented the new gt4 rs may be announced soon would that be a limited edition special you might be interested in? Well, I mean, I mean, it's bold to speculate that that car is going to exist. Yeah, I, do, I did see an article like, yeah. this morning that was like, oh, could but this thing for exist? For me, I'm like, if they were... So the only way for me that they could take a GT4 and make it an RS would be to put an actual GT series engine in it. So the engine from the 991 GT3. And potentially twin clutch it. Yeah. Or maybe leave it a uh, manual. manual. But what, what I've to, always if you're said, putting that engine in, then it's going to be too fast for a manual box. I, yeah, but I've, I've also always said that if they put that engine in a Cayman, oh yeah, you, no, you, like, you goodbye. Said, like, yeah, that's it. That. It's job done. Like I don't think you're gonna want a GT3. So I heard, or I read an article, mm. no idea the source, but it was something to do with a four-liter GT4. Which, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Whether Maybe if they good. kept it manual or whatever. But yeah, uh, to answer it, it would be something I would be interested in, especially if they put a GT3 engine in it and made it into a <laughs> gearbox. I'd be down there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be down. I'd be, I'd be down. My I would check be down work. there. <laughs> okay. Alfie underscore Hankins commented. Could the 2018 F12 replacement being revealed at Geneva replace oh. your F12? Oh. 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 The million dollar oh. question, Alfie. Well, what do you think, man? Oh, my McLaren dealer's calling right now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you couldn't time that any better. Switch it later, Nick. Um, so, F12 replacement, yeah, coming to Geneva. Could it replace my F12? So, the F12 is in a bit of limbo right now um, because so I got in it three weeks ago and realised that I hadn't driven it for four weeks, and that was just to move it to get the LT out. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't driven it since then. So for me, I'm a little bit like, why would I get a more expensive version of something that I'm not driving right now? Yeah. So potentially maybe further down the line when they start to appear on the pre-owned market, yeah. potentially. Uh, but right now, I'm even considering selling my own F12 because I don't drive it that much. So in short, no, but not because I don't think it's gonna be great, it's just because I'm getting more enjoyment out of other cars. At this present day. At this, at this present moment in time, no. So yeah, that's Would the Would that. the F12 replacement replace my F12? No. No? No, I like 
um, I like my F12. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't keep just, it on YouTube. Though. Just keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> you got one of those stickers on the back of your car. My other car's an F12. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> Serayan. Serayan. S E Y A. No. S E Y U R A N. Twenty one. How did you start your YouTube channel, and how long did it take you to buy your first supercar? So is that that's probably that's the wrong a bit order. of a wrong way around <laughs> yeah. actually. So I'm going to try and condense this history as much as I can. Paul himself, Sam, and Tim, aka Shmi, were a big factor in me starting because I would hang out with them on occasion. We did our first road trip together <laughs> when Paul had his R8, um, and. You know, they'd be like, well, when are you gonna pick up a camera and start? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get involved with you guys, but I'm not sure if the like camera thing's for me. Going back 15 years, <laughs> I used to actually film a lot of skiing and snowboarding content. And when I passed my driving test then, I was like 16, 17, I then Hopefully began, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, I was I was filming skiing and snowboarding okay. when I was 16. Yeah. Then I passed my driving test when I was 17 and I was like, okay, let's start filming cars. So funnily enough, I was filming cars a long time ago, but there was no platform to really share it on. Um, joined the real world for 12 years, managed to afford my first supercar, which was an Audi R8. And then I thought, you know what? Now's a good time to get the fundamental sense. passion of cars and filming starts from a absolutely. way before way YouTube. way back. Yeah, absolutely. It started before Facebook. I was, really? I was, yeah. So I would make videos with my mates. I think I and I would just and we would just Facebook. swap them between, like swap files between each other. With, I went to really yeah. host it and like share and you it. Do, yeah. So yeah. So that's that. <laughs> now this is a this is a good question. Go on. D V F underscore N Y C. Mm. What? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> this is funny when you have no idea. In capital letters, don't know the real you. What have you sacrificed to now have this as your main career? Question mark. Bold. Do you, know, do you know what? I actually think you'd probably be better to answer that because you've been. How long have you, have you been doing this for? Uh, Supercars of London's been going since 2008, and my predecessor to Supercars of London was going from like 2006. Wow, so you've been in the game. Like, so, <laughs> not that, not, I've not necessarily okay. sacrificed anything out of like a main career because. That. In a weird way, YouTube has that taken it. that path totally. where it is my career or job or yeah. something that earns me money to live and mm. and have soup for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I mean, I, I don't I don't really know what I've sacrificed because it's all that I know. So my take on this is, um, so I had a, a business life pre YouTube. Yeah. I honestly work harder at YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by that is um, Because it's your passion yeah, You don't feel don't, like you're it working It doesn't feel like yeah. working And it doesn't feel like sacrifice When mates say to me Oh we're all going out I'm like oh, I'm going to go film yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Some might say that my social life has been affected yeah, Because I mean Looking back on last year I've missed birthdays Christenings Family gatherings but selfishly, I know where I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> I hope none like, of your family I'm watches like, this. Hold on a minute. And let me just, I'm going to drive a like supercar up the side of a volcano, which literally happened yeah. last year, or you know, go and eat some birthday cake. Yeah. <laughs> so, so sacrifices like, generally have rather have more been like sort of social occasions and uh, like time, yeah, sleep. That's it. That's definitely. It, yeah. Uh, there's been so much travel that I feel like, I mean, January I've been in it, I was in England for five days. Uh, wow. And between that was just pure travel. So I get worn out a lot. Um, and there's lots of late nights. I think you'll vouch for this. People only see the end result of what you The tip made. of the iceberg. And it's the glorious, yeah. beautiful, <laughs> polished tip. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. on my part. <laughs> But sometimes to make a 12 minute video, you've been traveling for a day to get to a different country. You've stayed in a crap hotel to wake up at four in the morning and start when it's dark, mm. just so you can wake up at the top of a mountain. That's what I would say is, when yeah. I say I've worked harder on stuff, it's because I would never have in a million years have dreamt that, that I would go that far out of my way to make a 10 minute yeah. clip. I think so, the, yeah. my, my biggest example is when Monaco Top Marks is on. Yeah. Which is like a seven-day intense 
filming cycle of waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning, filming until 6 p.m., going back up, changing, going back down for dinner yeah. with our cameras fully charged. Because you from, have to, because the cars are out Because night. the cars are yeah. back out at night. You get back at 1 a.m. and you're editing till 3 a.m., uploading it on pretty dodgy Wi-Fi and, and so doing it all again. All over again. And yeah, it is yeah. total chaos and carnage. And yeah. the 15 minutes on the YouTube is incredible. And I love watching back the memories that we've made yeah, totally. out there. But that bit that no one else sees. I sometimes wish that there was a camera following us 24-7. Yes. Just so that It'd everyone be was... a good behind the scenes of yeah. a day in the life of a YouTuber. Yeah. Would be interesting. But actually... But made by someone else. <laughs> made by someone else. But yeah, like a sort of documentary series on it. But actually, like, a good chunk of it would be boring because you're sat in front of a laptop for like four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go down for dinner and people are like, oh, here comes the really stimulated conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's a... YouTubers around a table is the most anti-social thing ever. As soon as you sit down, excuse me, uh, can I have a Coke and the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> no, it's Wi-Fi password and a Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and then chips and then on my pizza. Everyone goes... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I would say biggest thing, time and social life. Yeah. Felix Yanis Balka, what car shocked slash impressed you the most? On your very first drive with it, I mean, I know the answer already. <laughs> well, Del T, like, yeah. without without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, if you haven't watched that clip, go back. Uh, sort of middle of last year, it's my first drive in a six seven five LT Spider. Um, Incredible. Yeah, the video, video speaks for itself. The funny thing about that video was uh, it wasn't. I, I wasn't supposed to be driving that car. My my flight got delayed. The uh, following day from 12 till 7 p.m. and the guys in the uh, hotel who were taking care of all the cars just said we got an LT Spider outside do you want to take it out for a drive said, yeah why not and um, did they get the sales commission when you bought one but, uh, well <laughs> unfortunately I, I couldn't buy it from a McLaren, McLaren dealer because yeah, it was they're all sold out <laughs> um, I, and I honestly up to that point like I no one had really done a good job of conveying how awesome it was it and was that just like, video yeah, that you yeah. made does a perfect job cool, of thank you. Yeah. conveying how good um, that car is. Yeah, because I don't. Yeah, like you said, I don't think there are enough videos out there of that car because it is yeah, such an incredible piece of it's automotive it's amazing, perfection. Amazing thing. And I think what amplified it was because I approached it with no expectation. I was just like, yeah, sure, let's yeah. go at it. Yeah. And I was half a mile down the road, and I was like, hold on a minute, <laughs> what is this? Um, and something which I may or may not have spoken about they gave me a one hour slot for that car they were like someone else is booked in it uh, so bring it back in an hour um on i was approaching the hotel coming back after my hour's drive and i'm just approaching the hotel and i was like i'm not ready for this and i turned around and i went away for an extra hour because i was just like <laughs> so blown away by it i thought there's no way i'm gonna put this down now so uh, i went again so yeah Incredible. so yes lt without a doubt rooster rooster ed Rooster Red one. Mm -hmm. How do you decide a car is worth buying, money-wise, or how do you? I think how do you decide it, whether a car is worth buying? So, I, this comes funnily enough that this for, for me ties in quite nicely with that previous question. Um, it's the one that pulls at the heartstrings. Mm. Um, you know, if it's fifty grand or three hundred grand, if it gets me by the heart, it's it's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> just like the LT problem. was the most expensive press day I've ever been on. <laughs> um, so to answer in short, if it affects me emotionally, if I'm like come out of that and I'm like, holy crap, what just happened? Then that to me is what dictates its, its price. I'm just like, well, that just so happens to be the price. Damn it. <laughs> like, like, yeah, oh, in some, in some cases, yay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. It doesn't have to be an expensive car. If it's... If it makes you smile and you love it and it's 500 quid, five grand, 50 grand, whatever, that is what justifies buying an yeah, item. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah? Can't put a price on happiness. Or are you like loud exhaust? <laughs> <laughs> Can't put a price on straight pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to me, yeah. even the R8 has obviously a, a special sentimental value to it sure. the Lamborghini Gallardo that I had I probably owned it at the wrong time because it, I bought it in September and sold it in February so I owned it through the winter yeah. even though four wheel drive it just I couldn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to have enjoyed it Okay. but my Vauxhall Astra the first car that I paid 
mean, Money yeah. for yeah, yeah. 1.6 SXI. I still remember the entire interior, all of the buttons yeah. and everything. And to me, when I saw that car for the first time, it literally grabbed my heart. I was like, That's oh, so man. Cool, man. That's and my amazing. mum said to me, Yeah. Don't buy the first car you see. And I walked into the dealership and I was like, <laughs> that's the one. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> Simo underscore AIE. Is there a car that you haven't driven yet that you would like to experience in 2017? Let's talk about cars that already exist. The two cars. Two cars. Two cars. Two cars. Go. Porsche Carrera GT and an F12 TDF. Yeah, they're good cars. They're two cars that, I mean, I haven't experienced or driven, and it's, I'm like crying out for both yeah. of those cars. I think for yeah. me, and this is going a little bit unrealistic, but the Zonda Cinque, I've not experienced. I mean, you, if you want to go there, then yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'll add that in the mix as well, for sure. Yeah, I'm thinking about things that I might be able to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Even just a passenger ride. Passenger ride in a Zonda yeah, with the right exactly. pipes. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, throw that in as well. Why not? Yeah. Actually, let me take this off now. It's not sunny anymore. No. anymore. This morning was great. Yeah, we uh, we uh, we got lucky. Yeah. Okie doke. Okay, Rag Rag have Sambre. What message would you like to give to teenagers in brackets like me? Who dreamed to own a supercar one day, Sir, Mister JWW? Please, please do my, do wow. take my question into consideration. Well, here it is. Um, it's in the video. So this is gonna this is gonna sound terribly cliche, but I'll I'll explain why after I've said it. Um, and this is now from personal experience. Yeah. Is you've got to do what you love doing now. Before you go, oh yeah, I heard that before, cliche, <laughs> cliche. I'm not saying that because it's nice and ideal and lovely to do what you love. It's because if you want to be as successful as I think you're talking about, it's bloody hard. It's, yeah. like, it's really hard. And so doing what you love will mean that you'll end up going over and above. Whatever it is, when you first start doing it, you'll enjoy it. Six months in, 12 months in, 18 months in, it, it just doesn't get easier. You start setting yourself higher goals. More and pressure. More pressure comes. You just aren't ever satisfied. And most people, and I, I truly believe this in any sort of walk of um, McLaren again, um, <laughs> any you know business job, anything. Most people don't put in a hundred and ten percent because they don't care enough about it. Whereas if you truly love what you do you'll work so hard it won't feel like work it'll it'll happen you'll excel at it because you're so passionate, passionate about, about it. it and also um, you'll understand the audience for what you're selling or appealing to because you are the audience I only make content that I like that mm. I would like to actually watch yeah. I don't think hmm, I wonder what they'd want to watch now yeah. I'm like this is awesome and I know it's awesome because I'm a genuine car enthusiast exactly sometimes people will come up to me and they ask me, you know, I'm really interested in starting YouTube and I would want to do cars. And I speak to them for 15 minutes and I find out that they're actually interested in cycling. Yeah. And I'm like, do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't do cars because it looks cool at the yeah. end of it. And I was like, believe me, like, it's going to be so hard and tough that if you're passionate cycling, do cycling. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're really going to excel at it. Um, yeah, so in short, do what you love. Not because it's cool, it's because you need to. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. Is that alright? Good answer. So throw in some <laughs> throw in some. Feedback, I don't feel like man. I need to add in any more. You don't think so? Because right, it's cool. so true. Uh, there's a lot of questions that are like, what car do you think what is PW should get next? Is this oh, why you, you, you is this, this is next? why <laughs> you like get the <laughs> <laughs> Oh it's uh it's uh it's gonna be a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Is, is that, right. that is it's that. Taking the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm glad we're on the same page about that one. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. I'm excited because obviously, I don't feel like I did the Lamborghini ownership justice the first time round. All right. It yeah. was a dream of mine to own one before I turned 25 years old. I did that. To me, that is literally a Dude, life goal. That tick. is a hell of a box to tick. It was. It was an incredible, incredible moment that I still watch back on that video because yeah. it just sort of still to this day yeah. overwhelms me that that actually yeah. happened. 
But then cool. what happened after that, the two week trip that we had in Monaco, mm. unbelievable. So special. And then I yeah. took it back to England and, and it, it rained. <laughs> and it was cold. <laughs> yeah. And the car sat there. Yeah. And I freaked out and I had the opportunity to sell it. And, I, and, 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 and that's what happened. Yeah, and so totally. now yeah. I am 100% focused dedicated and passionate about documenting <laughs> Lamborghini ownership to awesome. its full. I'm it's excited. DB11. That is a DB11. Wow. V12, BJJ. They Who'd have thought it? <laughs> That's the same spec as yours yeah. as well. Mine? <laughs> yeah, yours. The one I borrowed. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the one you filmed with, yeah. Sirius underscore Blatt. If each of your cars was a person from history or popular culture, who would they be? <laughs> <laughs> that okay. is a mad question that okay, is going to be so, fun to answer. So, I'm approaching this from the characters of the cars. So, starting with the McLaren, because it's quite calculated and scientific. Yeah. I'm going to go with Einstein. Nice. Yeah. Um, a bit flamboyant too with his hair. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A, a bit crazy. Yeah. But still calculated. Yeah. Um, F12. I'm gonna go with like Berlusconi <laughs> because it's flamboyant and fabulous, yeah. but every now and again it tries to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. <laughs> Many moments where it's trying yeah. to kill you, too. Yeah, <laughs> um, and the Porsche. I kind of feel like the GT3. Is a little bit like Clark Kent because, like, Clark Kent is a serious guy in a suit, yeah, dedicated with his glasses understated on, and tidy. understated, but then take his clothes off, all hell breaks loose, all hell breaks lost, loose, yeah, like with I, the shark, like, like the, what, the shark works, it's yeah, awesome. so, unleash, oh, yeah, absolutely, this superhero power that the yeah. GT3 has, which is this engine. I like it, I like that. That's so, good. there you go, yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> Okay, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling a lot, and the same sort of subject is appearing yeah. quite a lot. And I think okay. this is after a couple of videos that you filmed. Sure. Um, a lot of people are asking, like, what's happening? You were replacing the F12, like the GT3, what's going on with these two cars? Mm -hmm. So rather than pick one specific person, let's just, I suppose, finish on, on that. What is your thoughts and plans for the F12 and GT3? So as I mentioned earlier, the F12, I'm just not driving right now. Not, for, not because it's a bad car, I mean, it's phenomenal. Um, but right now I'm just getting more enjoyment out of rear engine cars. Yeah. Um, you know, as people who watch the channel regularly may or may not know that I genuinely daily the GT3. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it, it is fantastic and it just gives me more of what I want out of a sports car. The, the best thing about the F12 is the way it looks and the way it sounds. But unfortunately, most of the time in England, just the, the environment and road conditions aren't conducive to exploiting the potential of that car. Yeah. That's not to say that I want to drive like a bat out of hell <laughs> all the time. What I mean is, is that it, it reaches this area of its range of performance yeah. where grip becomes an issue, <laughs> is, what, is, is what I would say. And so I actually find when I get in the F12 that I drive it pretty steady so when I'm in it I feel like I'm kind of wasting this car yeah. I'm like I'm only driving 10% of what it can do um, and I think really the main reason that I haven't driven that car a lot lately is because you know since September weather's been terrible yeah and the f12 in that weather I drive like Miss Daisy yeah so it just doesn't compel me to get in it now on top of that I would probably be more inclined to keep that car if there wasn't a new f12 coming out soon. Mm. Now, as we've addressed earlier, I won't be buying one, I don't think, because I'm not driving the one I've got now. So yeah, I don't think there's silly much to replace place it for a... in spending so much more money on the same, you know, platform, um, yeah, when I'm probably going to be spending a good chunk of my time in Europe in the LT anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so chances are I'm, I'm, I am seriously considering selling the F12 in short. I wonder how many comments would be, Porsche by the F12. Porsche, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, GT3, the opposite, but still similar. 
And let me explain. Opposite, I drive it all the time. And what I mean by that is I've done 20,000 miles uh, in 12 months. <laughs> and it's been a phenomenal car. But it's been a YouTube car from day one. The it channel introduced, it had its wrap on there. We've had yeah. road trips. And I've done so much with that car uh, that I, I think it's time for a, a change. So there is new cars coming this year, which I shan't mention yet because I can't even. I can't even put it, have an input, guys. I don't even know. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while there might be one or two cars going, uh, there is also one or two cars coming. Exciting so times. exciting times. Uh, but they've both been fantastic. But we're in a new year, new adventures, new cars. New year, new me. Yeah, I mean, awesome. garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. I mean, we have covered. We've covered some decent topics. So hopefully, uh, my my question. Asking ability has been good enough for your video. Quizmaster Speciality, mate. Yeah, it's been awesome. Quizmaster Speciality. <laughs> Aperta or not? Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't get that far. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> cool. As always, guys, thank you for watching. If you have been living under a rock for a while and you haven't subscribed to Paul's channel, visit Supercars of London. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Ciao. See you later, guys. <laughs>